Alright, so today we will be talking about the newer characters in patch 2.1 in a little bit deeper inspection. Going over their skill set more, their potential artifact set, and a very early first impression as well as what can you pre-farm for them right now. All the information I'll be talking about here are available from the official Genshin Impact YouTube channel on their live stream. So yeah, let us begin. Starting off with Bao, the Raiden Shogun, the Electro Archon. Her elemental skill, her E, is essentially a steroided version of the Electro Traveler Elemental Burst. Which is whenever you do damage with your E, Q, Normal, and Charge Attack, it will do an additional line of Electro damage on top of all of those, and it also buffs your team, making all your allies do more damage on their Elemental Burst Q as well. So that's a pretty stacked ability on an E alone for the Bal, for the Raiden Shogun. As it does allow her to provide off-field damage, which is something very valuable in this game. So she'll fit in nicely with the Electro, uh, with the Electro Traveler, with Beidou, Fisho, Xingqiu, uh, and Sacha. And her elemental burst. So for Bao's elemental burst, it converts her normal charge attack and plunge attack to electro damage and she goes into her sword stance where she uses her blade. During the stance, she gains resistance to interruption, immunity to electro charge damage, she generates energy whenever she hits an enemy during her elemental burst, and the normal charge and plunge attack from this sword stance counts as elemental burst damage, so by that line alone, it's pretty clear we're just supposed to run Emblem set on Bal, as it is the premier set to amplify elemental burst damage, yes? And according to the voice actor Sara from the livestream, she does have a passive similar to Mona, where she converts a portion of her energy recharge into elemental damage bonus. After unlocking the passive talent Enlightened One, if the Shogun's energy recharge surpasses 100%, she'll receive greater energy restoration from Muso Ishin, as well as increase its Electro Damage bonus. Now, the only difference is that Mona converts all of her energy recharge to Elemental Damage bonus, whereas Bao only converts any energy recharge she has above the base 100% that everyone has. So the bonus may be a little bit less than Mona, but it is quite a good bonus because the extra electro damage bonus on emblem set running a energy recharge timepiece that's already you're probably hitting like 170 to 200 energy recharge already so that's quite a bit of damage so the reason why you would want to run the emblem set aside from thundering fury no plus is because thundering fury no plus only gives you 35 percent damage bonus on elemental burst whereas you only need at least 150 percent energy recharge for it to have a higher elemental damage bonus on your burst than the set because at 150 energy recharge you'll be gaining 37.5 percent damage bonus on your burst just by building er on bow she will also gain the electro damage bonus so you'll have a shit ton of damage bonus percent from emblem set from your own passive and that's quite good yes with that said since her elemental burst changes her auto attack to electro and her autos are now considered elemental burst damage i think for talents priority you can safely ignore auto attack for Bao and only invest into your E and your Q. My general first impression of Bao is that she seems like a Zhao-ish playstyle with some supportive capabilities. So what I mean by that is you just swap to Bao whenever you have your elemental burst, do the however many attacks you can do during that duration, use your E, use your Q, and then swap to another character, wait for the downtime, and then swap back to Bao to do everything once again. Now, so far, every Archon represents their element, yeah? Venti, the Anemo Archon, has massive crowd control, because that's the one thing most Anemo character has. Zongli is very durable, tanky, because uh, that's what most Geo characters are supposed to do with their elemental reactions, right? Crystallize, I know no one really uses it, but it is there. With that in mind, Electro Element, isn't ever or wasn't ever well known to be the most damaging element in the game. Compared to the other elemental character, Pyro, Hydro, and Cryo, which has a free way to double their damage with Melt and Vaporize due to elemental reaction, 
And Cryo, even with Freeze, with the Cryo set giving you 40% more crit rate at max, so you can push a lot of stat to crit damage. Electro doesn't really have any extra choice right now. Electro reactions such as Electro Charge and Overload are okay at best, but they don't improve the performance of these characters by that much. And mostly Electro Element, the strong ones like Beidou and Fischl, still relies on their raw damage output instead. So, first impression of Bao is she'll be a very good energy recharge, off-field support, and kind of Zhao-ish playstyle with the uh, swap in with ults. But it is still raw damage, and as for raw damage, that would be very very resin heavy because you would need quite a bit of good artifacts to really make the most use of bow either that or you spend like a ton of money on the weapon banner to get like the op five star weapons i'd say she's gonna be a good strong character since she is i'd say the main star of next patch they may give her like a lot of damage ratio so that she can make the most use of her raw damage ish playstyle of course you can kind of pair her up with Zing Cho to do some electro charge and that would kind of work my current plan is just to do like double electro Xing Cho and maybe an Anemo character for resistance shred for Bao if I'm gonna play test her out yeah the next character we're talking about is Kokomi I think the biggest thing that we can talk about about Kokomi is that the fact that she cannot crit she has negative 100 crit rate at base and with that, she gains some healing bonus percent for that negative crit rate. Keikomi E is essentially Mona's E, but it heals you, but it doesn't taunt enemies. And her elemental burst is, once again, kind of like Zhao, kind of like Noel, kind of like Razor. She goes into a stance where she does extra damage on her normal and charge attack, and also kind of heal allies per se, yeah? But I think that's where it is, really. Let's put it this way. I think Mihoyo is actively trying to mess up the second banner every patch because every patch there's two banners, there's the first and the second banner. Usually whenever the second banner appears, you will see the official developer livestream talking about next patch. So when Kokomi banner is out, we'll already see characters in patch 2.2. I think Mihoyo is rather content about people skipping Kokomi. Unless she's really waifu to you, I don't see a reason of pulling her. Currently, Kokomi provides nothing but healing based on the information we were given, and that puts her on the same level of Chichi and Barbara, the characters that provide nothing but healing, yes? The main reason why the current very powerful healers in the game are used is because they provide some things that are not healing alone. So, attack buff, barrier, glens, veridescent elemental shred, and maybe elemental application or elemental buff, yeah? They're more offensive healers, the word, yeah? And that's why they are strong. That's why characters like Bennett are super strong. Because a pure healer is only very usable if you're super early on in the game. And the fact that she cannot crit, meaning she may have very high damage ratio, and hopefully she has very high damage ratio because she cannot crit. That would be the only saving grace, because I would see her being a good character for free to play. But I want to ask myself that, do I need a super powerful healer to get through the game early? Or just any healer works and any other DPS, no? For Kokomi, I guess you can run like Beidou, Fischl, Electro Traveler, Bao, or Sara just for Electro Charge builds, yeah? For Artifact set for Kokomi, I'd say I would try to run maybe Hydro set just to make the most use of her Hydro damage bonus on normal and charge attack. Or I guess just maiden setbacks for healing. So my, my current thoughts about Kokomi is she's rather lackluster and I'll be honest, I don't think she provides anything new to the game except the fact that you can walk on water, which I don't see how often that'll be useful because you you know, like at best how long does your how long does how long is the longest element of burst in the game last? The longest element to burst in the game, like infusion, is Zhao, right? It lasts like 15 seconds, yeah, so I guess at best, maybe 15 seconds floating on water would be kind of cool and all. But other than that, I find Okomi rather lackluster, and I'd say this is a waifu-only pull. You only pull her if 
you for some reason really like her Disney princess kind of motif, I'd say. <laughs> ah, there's the shade. All right. Next is Sara. Sara, elemental skill, teleports her backwards and gives her a stack, which causes her next charge attack to drop a crow feather, which provides an attack buff to the character on the field after it explodes on a short delay. Basically, you play Sara, you press E, you charge attack, and you swap to another character that you want to attack buff from. So like, charge attack and then swap, so that character gets the attack buff. And her elemental bursts are massive AoE attacks that covers quite a bit of radius and provide the same attack buff to your team as your E. So she has two instants of attack buff on her entire kit, meaning I would say she can provide quite a bit of uptime on her kit. But the biggest comparison to Sara would be Bennett. And the short answer is no, I do not think Sarah will replace Bennett. Bennett isn't used for his attack buff alone, although it is a good reason of it, but he's mainly used because he does everything. He is the fastest energy recharge character in the game because his E is on a 2 second cooldown with the 2 passive he has, yeah? And his ult also cleanses a debuff from you because it applies pyro to self, so it cleanses debuff. It heals, it provides an attack buff, yeah? Now, for the attack buff portion, there's something that people didn't know about Bennett, which is Bennett's buff, this is a lie. Bennett's buff ticks once a second and the buff it provides lasts for two seconds. That's why Bennett... Elemental Burst actually have a 14 second duration and 15 second cooldown, meaning it only has a 1 second downtime because of uh, the lingering buff for 2 seconds, which is really obnoxious to be honest, that's really broken. <laughs> At first, everyone thought that you had to stay on the field to receive the buff, but we figured that the buff actually lingers and you can test it out however many times you want and it will appear. Other than that, Bennett only buffs the character on the field at the moment, right? So, Tara will just swap to the character that she wants to buff, so only one character at a time as well. Otherwise, you have to snapshot your buff, like snapshotting Beidou, Zhang Ling, Aika's burst, so they carry on for the entire burst duration and such. But, Sara can do pretty much the same thing with Bennett, right? For Sara, it's either gonna be Emblem set for more damage on that huge AoE elemental burst, no plus set just for the extra buffing of damage buff, or maybe a little quirky Thunder Fury set for cooldown reduction whenever you proc a Electro Reaction so you can provide buff more often, so you can provide your buffs more often, or maybe a little quirky Thunder Fury set whenever you proc an elemental reaction to reduce your cooldown on your skill so you can proc that buff more often. My verdict about Sara is kind of like, she doesn't replace Bennett. She's more of like Mona-ish, where it's just damage buff alone, no other utility. Bennett is still a lot more slot efficient because he provides healing and buff at the same time, as we said, right? I really like Sara though. Just for many reasons. I guess one of the reasons is that I have a C6 Bennett as well, so it, it made me it made him unusable on you know physical damage comps for me. So Sara may be better on some team comps for me. And another option of attack buff is always nice. Because you go you can only put Bennett on one team in Abyss, not two, so there we go. Another option. Kinda like Sucrose Kazuha situation, I suppose. It works. It's nice. I don't think she'll be completely broken, but I would like to say this now. I think she'll be a character that will see more and more usage in the future because she is a support and currently it's just support impacts right now. You just pull all the OP supports and play any Barbie doll main DPS you want because they're just there to look pretty, right? The supports will carry them. That's sadly the, uh, the Genshin impact we're playing right now. I think Sara can fit into the majority of team comp because who wouldn't like to receive a great attack buff, yes? And now for the very last character that is coming to PS players, PlayStation players on patch 2.1, that would be Alloy, the uh, collab character from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Alloy E throws a grenade like Glee that will then split up to multiple fragments and it also converts her auto attack to cryo damage so she'll be doing cryo damage on normal attack 
and her elemental burst is just throw a big grenade, shoot it, and then it explodes, and it just does more damage. Alloy will be available for everyone in patch 2.2, but it will be available for PS players only on patch 2.1. And the fact that she is a cryo character, meaning she can make use of Sing Cho and the set for an extra easy 40% crit rate. On top of her very, very huge AoE attack, the current Genshin Impact content, the Abyss, is mainly focused on AoEing enemies down, like multiple enemies down, so her AoE is always welcome there, yes. I'm not too sure about how particularly strong any of these characters coming would be because numbers, right? They will have to show us the numbers somehow for us to really see. So currently, it's just a very early first impression, but I think Alloy will be a relatively good character. Unless they got her on purpose because she's a free character. Other than that, what can you pre-farm right now? Well, realistically, the only thing you can pre-farm for are the local specialties. So Oni Kabuto, Sakura Bloom, Crystal Marrow, Dendrobia, Naku Weed, and C Ganoderma. That's the only realistic thing you can pre-farm right now for next patch. As they are adding three more bosses to the game. La Signora or La Sinora is a weekly boss that will cost 60 resins per week, which Practically means that Bao and Saira will use the weekly boss material from her to level up their talents and the Hydro Hypostasis as well as the Thunder Manifestation. Like, I don't think you have to be a great genius to guess like, yeah, they are going to use these elite boss material for their ascension stat and for their talent material. So I would not recommend trying to pre-farm for crystal chunk and stuff for them because you'll be you'll have to do the bosses anyway for the resource to ascend them. Other than that, I guess you can go very, very suspicious dreamer mode to see which talent books they might particularly need, yes? And that is all. I'm only sad that I can't triple crown Sara right away when the patch comes out because she requires a new weekly boss material. But that will be all for a more, a little bit more in-depth overview of the current character's next patch. So, this is the very, very, very early first impression of these characters. Rather than a conclusive on how weak or strong these characters are, but those are just my thoughts and the artifacts and what I'm planning to do with them or how I'm planning to play them for now. Oh yes, and one last reminder tip. From now, Till the next patch, which is in 10 days, which is the exact date of when Keikomi banner, well not Keikomi, Yomiya banner will end, which is in 10 days. From now, towards that 10 days, including the 300 Primo Gems code in total of the official live stream, your daily login commission, as well as the new event, a very boring event I'd say in Phantom Flow. You get 420 Primo Gems here. In 10 days, that'll be 600 Primo Gems from Daily Commission, plus another 90 every day if you have a uh, Welcome. And that will be it, because I don't think the Leyline event gives you any Primo Gems. I do not think the Leyline event gives you any Primo Gem. So, from now till next patch, you can probably save up a temple yeah <laughs> which is not a lot but it's a little something to know about other than that for the new patch they will give you a daily login that gives you 10 summons <laughs> ah what great anniversary reward